My name is Eddie Jackson Jr. And I want to take y'all back into the Righteous Reverend tonight. I had left y'all off where the Righteous Reverend had just got back in the building and gave me the 10000 now listen at this. He had just got out of jail now. He had just got out of jail. I told you I went to jail in front of Samson. The very next day after he paid me, that next day he gave me 10 the next day, it was this guy by the name of Dennis. <clears throat> he was Roz's brother. Roz who worked at the courthouse who I told y'all was fixing tickets for me. Her brother was Dennis and her father was Robert Winston. Understand, I'm going to take you all through this whole thing because it's a sort of affair. Like I told you all, it might be a 10 series part here. Understand, so let me take you into the Righteous Reverend on down the road. Now, the Righteous Reverend that got busted. He just got out of jail, paid me to get back in the building. Now, Dennis snatched a whole sack from him. He out in front of the building with a cigar in his mouth. As usual, the Righteous Reverend kept a cigar. He always smoked a cigar and kept a cigar in his mouth. So the righteous reverend just got back in the building. He banging like a motherfucker. He out in front of the building serving this motherfucker crackhead Dennis, which was Rise's brother. Like I just told y'all, who was the clerk down at the courthouse who was fixing tickets for nigga. Now Dennis, he, Dennis tell him give me five. He pulled a whole goddamn bag out a whole motherfucker $10,000 worth of stone. He ain't just slinging with a thousand dollars, five hundred, two hundred. He got to have ten thousand dollars worth of nickels in a brown paper bag, a big brown paper bag, like you used to carry full of money. He used to put ten thousand dollars worth of crack in there and be outside serving. Then come on, how many you want? Better. Then he snatched the whole goddamn bag. Give all of them to me, motherfucker. Took off, running like a motherfucker. Now the righteous rev is behind him in that Chrysler Baron. I told y'all about that gray color with the burgundy top. He done jumped into the Baron. Dennis coming down the alley of French Road. He chased him down the alley in the car. Hoo -hoo. And you know how a car be bouncing over each hump. And Dennis running like a motherfucker, jumping through that. So Dennis going to Grove, his father's house, Robert Winston. Dennis beat him to Grove, take off. Circle around the back of the house. Circle back to the front of the house. Now he in the alley in the car chasing Dennis. He then grabbed his gun out the car. He swung the car around from the alley to the front of the house. God damn it, Dennis. I know your motherfucking ass. And now he got a gun in the middle of the street in his hand. He just got out of jail. He had Dennis's house screaming at the top of his voice. God damn it, Dennis. You better get out of here. I'm killing this motherfucker. He done snatched my shit. So this man is out here performing. Understand, this nigga is performing. Me and Mook is with him. I got a shotgun in the car. He got the 38. Me and Dale leave. Mook, let's go, because the police coming, and we ain't finna get caught with this shotgun back in this nigga up. We out, Rev. If you don't come the fuck on, we gone. We leaving your motherfucker. Y'all get the fuck on, because I'm killing this motherfucker. Now he out here on the sidewalk in the middle of the street, Waving this goddamn gun, talking about he going to kill Dennis. Now, this house was a two-family flat. He runs downstairs, check the house for Dennis, not realizing it's a goddamn two-family flat. The door is here. Dennis ran upstairs hiding. So, Dennis is watching all this shit from upstairs. Everything this nigga doing. Dennis standing upstairs watching this nigga perform. Motherfucker, I'm killing him. Pow! He even let off two shots. At that point, I said, move. Let's get the fuck out of here. Cause the right to the red finna go right back to jail where he just left. Now me and Mook pulled right off from Roberts Winston's house on Grove. Straight going towards Hamilton. When we get to the corner of Hamilton, it's a yellow truck that say animal on the side. It say animal catcher on this side. And on the opposite side, it say police. So this motherfucker out here with the gun in the middle of his hand, the police sitting right here in the yellow goddamn dog catcher truck looking right at him. When me and Mook break the right, the dog catcher truck make the goddamn left going straight down there to get him right in the middle of the street with the motherfucking gun. The dog catcher truck whip up on him. When he realized the motherfucking dog truck went out, police motherfucker, he dropped the gun on the curve and it was it had been it had snowed. It was a lot of snow out there. 
I mean a lot of snow. So the gun fell on the curve and fell in the goddamn snow so he couldn't find it. And he really didn't know if he had seen a gun in his hand. It happened that quick. When he catched that part, bam, the gun fell out in the snow and he couldn't find it. So he over there looking for the gun and he started performing. I'm killing this motherfucker. I don't give a fuck. I'm killing this motherfucker. Now the dog catcher is looking for the gun. At this time, the dog catcher, he looking for the gun and righteous reverend study out there. I'm killing that bitch. I don't care what the fuck y'all say. That bitch is mine. Now he didn't just left jail two days prior to this. Now he in front of Robert's Winston House on Grove in the middle of the block, clowning, cutting up. So now the dog catcher looked at him and said, hey, brother, would you please go on somewhere? Now would you please go on? Go on home somewhere, now go on home. I ain't going no motherfucking where. I want my shit back. He took my motherfucking dope, and I want it back. He told the goddamn police, the animal catcher, every goddamn, that motherfucker snatched my dope right around the edge of Geneva and ran his motherfucking ass around here, and that ain't going to save him. As if I told y'all this goddamn stupid-ass righteous reverend. Now, he act like he's selling dope legally. He done told the police he gonna kill this man cause he done snatched a bag of dope from him. And Dennis upstairs watching all this shit go down. Understand this. This is what's going on. So the dog catcher told him, he said, man, go on about your business, leave. Cause me and Dale had left in the car cause we got the shotgun in the car. Now he done dropped the pistol on the side of the curb and it fell in the snow where they can't find it. Now the dog catcher told him again, Brother, would you leave and go on about your business? I ain't going no motherfucking where till I get my shit. And I ain't going no mo ain't no motherfucker making me leave here go no motherfucking where until I get my shit. And I want my shit and I'm getting my goddamn shit. If I had to go in that motherfucking house and search it from top to bottom. Now me and Dale had walked back around the corner and we looking at this stupid motherfucker to perform, tell them all this shit. We parked the car a block over and got out and walked back around to see what's going to happen to the raptor's rev. He's still around there performing. Now, the animal catcher then told him, get the fuck on, man. Go on before I just take your motherfucking ass to jail. I'm trying to be nice. He just kept performing. So the animal catcher called for backup. The motherfuckers who just arrested this clown motherfucker. He called Quaker, Ponytail, Axel Foley, Callaway, and Francisco. Here they come racing in a burgundy motherfucking new Taurus. Four of them. And then Callaway was driving a motherfucking Mustang by himself. So here come them motherfuckers in a Taurus all four of them. And Callaway in a motherfucking little blue Mustang backing them up. Here they come. They race up on this motherfucker. They look at this motherfucker and say, Motherfucker, you just got out of jail, you motherfucker. You motherfucker, you, come on, goddammit, you going back to jail. And the animal catcher had told the motherfucker, Mook is a verified witness to this case. My motherfucking cousin, Mook Gandhi, beast Mook Gandhi. We looking at this stupid motherfucker, righteous reverend, like this nigga then really lost his motherfucking mind. Now, let me tell you, they tell him, get in the back of the motherfucking car, you going to jail. They cuff him. Now, this nigga that performed so motherfucking bad. Let me show y'all what happened. Everybody on the block is outside watching this shit, man. Every goddamn house on the block is out there watching this on Grove. So they put this clown motherfucking righteous reverend in the back of the car. And he said, uh, who motherfucking car is this? That was the car he had dropped the goddamn gun on the side of. My man was standing right next door to Rosnam house. He said, it's my car. They said, would you come move this car for us? He went out there, moved the car, and they found the gun and took this stupid ass right. We got your stupid ass, nigga. You just left jail, and you around here with this shit? Man, they took that nigga, they took the gun, and took that monkey motherfucking righteous reverend right back to jail. The motherfucker just got out two days ago. He got caught in front of Samson. I'm finna run this shit down on y'all. Now, let me just explain y'all to this. I was getting 1500 a day out there, son of a bitch. 
I wanted five thousand dollars a day. It should have been getting ten. Fucking with this soft as the goddamn driven snow, Reverend. So let me explain to y'all what all I did for this summer mama bitch. Now I turns him on to Courtney Brown Senior. At this time, Courtney Brown Senior was getting cane from a man out of Norman's K. Understand this. Now he getting cane from him. Killer cocaine out of Norman's K. Understand this. So now I turn him on to Courtney so he can get the good cocaine. But first, let me explain this to y'all and I'm going to go. And I really want to know what y'all think about this. I wasn't supposed to be selling cane out of the building in the first goddamn place. Because this is the two years that I wasn't supposed to be doing nothing. Now, I'm selling cane out the building. I could have been getting the shit from Demetrius. Let me explain to y'all the crackhead shit I did. This real crackhead shit. And I want y'all honest opinion on it. And tell me y'all honest opinion. Now, first, I turned him on to my man that I was copping from that I wasn't supposed to be copping from. And let me say this. You fucking up. If you get high on your own supply, cause selling and trying to motherfucking maintain a sack will never work. So I was selling and man trying to maintain the sack. So I would give my man $500. Ounces at this time was costing $1,600, mind you. Let me explain the whole story to you, true to the motherfucking game. This is how it went. I was getting high and I started getting came from my man. I was with 16, huh? I give him 500, said, man, give me another one. Then he come back, I said, man, I got 300, give me another one. And my man would always give it to me, nothing but love. So I turned the Righteous Reverend on after I'm getting high and Rev Righteous Reverend running the business. I turned him on to my man. I ain't supposed to be selling cane in the first place out the building. Now, it hits Demetrius here. This shit banging so tough, it hits Demetrius here. And Demetrius wondering, why in the fuck I ain't getting the cane from him? And what the fuck am I really doing? If this building, and they was, it was building, it was banging. And Demetrius was wondering, why, who in the fuck is Eddie getting this cane from? So now I'm getting high and don't want Demetrius to know I'm getting high. If I was getting cane from him, he, but he knew I was getting high anyway. Because the shit, niggas going to tell on you in the street. When you think niggas don't know you get high, niggas know. So my man is treating me proper. And to this day, let me say this before I go any further. This is the worst thing I ever feel I ever did in my life. But I'm going to tell y'all how I tried to make it up. And I want y'all honest opinion on what I did and how it went. I fucked up $8,000 giving him $500 for a 16 ounce. Turn around, give him 700 give him 300 And my man was giving them to me. I was selling and smoking and fucking up. Now I done ran up an $8,000 ticket with this man. My man. Love him to this day. This my nigga, man. Because any nigga that real have let you do that is a real nigga. And I want him to know this to this day. So now, I done fucked up 8000 with him. I'm getting high. Now, he run out of cane during a cocaine drought. Now, I'm paying $1,600 an hour. After that, I didn't have a choice. I had to go back to Demetrius. So I went to Demetrius and asked him for some cane. He went and told my father that I was getting high and selling cane out the building, him and my sister. So this is when my sister and Demetrius told my father that I was getting high and I was selling cane out the building. So he's like, who the fuck you getting cane from if you ain't getting from a Demetrius? I said, a friend I knew, so I was getting it from a man and I was fucking up. Just to be honest with y'all, I fucked that man's money up. And I felt bad about it in my heart. Now here's how I played it. And I, to this day, I think I played it the wrong way. But this is how I played it. But I should have gave that man. Now, nah, he ran into a drought. I started getting cane from Demetrius for $400 an ounce after I was paying him $1,600. Then when I was paying him, Leroy, Leroy and John, Leroy. Leroy was begging me the whole time. I started paying him $1,400 ounce for two ounces. First, it was $1,600 for one. Then I started paying him $1,400 for two ounces. Leroy cutting into me, Eddie, I'll give him to you for 12. But this is before the drought came. Leroy was steady cutting into me every day. But I felt so much loyalty to this man because I had fucked up $8,000 of his money and I just couldn't live with it. I felt bad within my heart that I had did this to this man. And I really felt bad. Now I'm rolling with Demetrius. I didn't left him. 
I'm banging like a motherfucker. I ain't paid him none of his money. Now, when I get back with him, I ran for him two goddamn ounces a day at 1400 and Leroy begging me every day I cop from him and both of them copping from the same person. Leroy is telling me, man, I got the same thing he got. Trust me, Eddie, and I'm going to give it to you cheaper than him. But my loyalty to him, because I had fucked up $8,000, I didn't feel right leaving him to go to Leroy. Okay, so when I left him, it was a drought, and I had to go to Demetrius. I started getting him for $400. So now I'm rolling 40 going north. Demetrius get killed. I never paid him. I never paid my man, which was wrong. I was 100% wrong. But listen at this now. Not paying him, I stayed with him. Instead of going to Demetrius, I ran for that man for one year. First, I was paying. I fucked up at sixteen. I fucked all it up. I fucked up eight thousand dollars at sixteen hundred dollars. When I came back to prove and redeem myself to him, I was paying fourteen hundred dollars every day for one year, including Sunday. And he didn't even work Sunday, but he made sure I had two ounces on Sunday. He didn't even work Sundays, but he made sure I had two ounces on Sunday. I did two ounces every day for one year straight. Paying $1,400 a day. And every day, Leroy was begging me, man, why are you so loyal to this nigga? I couldn't tell Leroy, man, I fucked up $8,000 of that man money. Now, how would he feel if I left and said, fuck him and just started hustling with Leroy? So I stuck with him until he ran out of cane because I couldn't go to Demetrius until he didn't have no more cane because I didn't want Pops to know I was hustling out the building because I wasn't supposed to be hustling. But y'all know it, nigga. I'm hustling anyway. So now I done went to my man. I done got cane and fucked up $8,000. So now I ran with him for one year paying $1,400 for two ounces and Leroy begging me every day to sell it to me for twelve. So I felt so much loyalty to him. I couldn't leave him like that. Man, I felt I owed that man a house shot. I never paid him the goddamn seven, the $8,000. Let me give you exactly what it was. So when Demetrius got killed, I went back to him. After Demetrius got killed, I went back to my man. I said, hey, man, I know I owe you $8,000. I had a shoebox full of money. 250 was with me. We went over on Apollon is where I went and met this brother. We went on Apollon. And I went in the basement. I said, brother, I know I owe you 8000 I gave him $1,000. I say, here's $1,000. I need to buy a key. And every time I buy a key, I'm going to give you $1,000 till you get your other $7,000. I bought the first key out of 36 ounces. I got 18 ounces back. I said, damn, my man getting garbage. I bought another key. Same thing. 36 ounces. I got 18 ounces back. Then I bought that third key. And he had his cousin Tommy serving me. So Tommy was serving me, which was his cousin. And he was cooking the cane for me. Because when I cooked the shit, it would come back 15 grams. When Tommy cooked it, he would get 20. So he would get an extra five grams of mine so you don't know how to cook. But I've been cooking all this shit and it's been coming back like ding, ding, ding in a second. And Tommy still take him 30, 40 minutes to cook the shit. So he got Tommy cooking it for me now and I'm buying it from him. And Tommy was cooking it for me one day. I said, man, Tommy, this is some garbage ass cane. And Tommy looked at me and Tommy said, you shouldn't say shit because you only made $1,000. Now, I done been running for a year paying this man $200 more than I had. And if I had went to Demetrius, I could have got the shit for four. Know that. So now I'm paying him $1,400. And I could have got the shit for $800. $400 an ounce from Demetrius. I had have got the shit from $800 even cheaper than Leroy was offering it to me. So I did that three times. I bought a key and every time it came back, 18 grand. Then Tommy looked me in my eye and told me, you shouldn't say anything because you only made $1,000. And I'm feeling like, damn, bro, I done ran goddamn for a, a year paying him $1,400 when I could have been getting the shit from twelve. And if I had a left, he'd be like, nigga, owe me money any but I came back like a real one. I gave, I owe that man $8,000. I 
I, Craig Johnson is my motherfucking witness. I gave that man $1,000 and I told him, every time I cop from you, I will give you $1,000 on what I owe you. Now, I owe you $7,000 right now. You would probably see me tomorrow. It was about two days and the cane was garbage to the motherfucker. Two days later, I still came back and gave him another play and told him, man, this shit coming back like total garbage, man. But you, my man, I'm going to go ahead on running. So I ran three keys like that. I felt as though, damn, that's kind of payback to me. In my heart, truly in my heart, I felt this and I feel this to this day. The type of buke I took, I gave you goddamn 1400 when I could have been getting this shit for 12 and even four. But because I wasn't supposed to be selling in the building, is why I did it. Now I done fucked up $8,000, so I feel indebted to you. So instead of me, when I can get it for 400 saying, well, I can't fuck with him. I should just give him the $8,000 and me through with it. But now I done just lost goddamn a key and a goddamn half. I done just bought three goddamn keys and got goddamn 18 ounces out of each one or less. Now you tell me. And I didn't say one word because I knew I had fucked up $8,000 of his money. And I felt this was his way of getting back at me. This is what I really felt in my heart. Damn, you fucked up that man's money, Eddie. You shouldn't say nothing. And I didn't say nothing. But I stopped copping from him. Know that. And see, this is how life works. And don't ever forget this. The day Demetrius got killed, he was the man I was finna get two keys for. Know that. The day Demetrius got killed, he was the man that sat right next to me as I called Demetrius and told him I needed two keys for my dog. And that's the story, another chapter. I got to take y'all into all the how Tim got killed. But I had to take y'all into how I plugged the goddamn righteous reverend. Now, I plugged him with him. Now, righteous reverend is copping from him. I ain't getting no action off of that. I don't, know, don't nobody pay me off of that. I ain't got nothing to do with it because I didn't fuck this man money up. And I'm walking real light because I feel that was what was proper. Now, I'm asking y'all out there. What's y'all opinion on the whole situation? Tell me, how do y'all feel about the situation? I paid that man 1400 for two ounces for one year straight. He know it because I told him, man, Leroy begging me to leave you. And he going to give him to me for 12. And I wouldn't leave him because I felt a sense of loyalty. And see, that's how Donald Trump is. Loyalty is everything to him. Look at his first pick for his motherfucking chief of staff. And what is Donald Trump saying? Loyalty. So I felt a sense of loyalty to him because I had fucked this money up and I made goddamn show he made money. Now y'all tell me if he didn't make his money back. He gave me three goddamn keys coming back 18 grams, half of what it's supposed to be. I ain't say a word because I knew I owed it him. But at the same time, be ridiculous, be, be serious. Now, if a nigga do that, what's y'all opinion of the situation? That ain't even counting the year I ran paying $1,400 every day, and I could have got the shit for twelve or either 400 I could have got the shit for eight. I'm paying him damn near double of what I could have really got it for and started getting it for that. Because once he ran out and didn't have nothing else, that's when I left him. And started fucking with Demetrius. And once Demetrius got killed, I came back to him. And when I came back to him, I came back to him and said, Hey, man, let me start off by paying you your $8,000. Here's a thousand of it now. And every time I cop a key, which I was copping a key a day, so he'd have got his $8,000 in eight days. But now you killing the bag. So how in the fuck I'm going to give you that and you killing the bag? So I just took off. I took off and went to New York and got with Pablo and crazy and started a whole nother party. So let me finish up this series here. But I just want y'all to know the truth about it all when I was getting high. And see, my shit was I was getting high. I was getting high and I still tried to be a fair motherfucker when I was getting high. Man, look, when I know I've been fair and you know a nigga been fair, that's that. When a nigga, you know a nigga been fair, a nigga been mad, hey, I'm short, man. And then if I really felt like that, let's be honest now, let's be honest. If I felt that way, I could have shot Rodney Rice, Lamont Upshaw, any of them there. But that was never in my heart. Because what was in my heart is the kindness 
that he showed me. That man showed me incredible kindness. And I respect that to this very day. So cash out Eddie Baby 22 and tune in for tomorrow's installment on The Righteous Reverend. Now, I didn't turn him on to Courtney. He didn't came from Courtney Brown Sr. Straight out of Bahamas, Mr. B's. He getting Mr. B's cane bezel. So now I done turned him on to Courtney, and Courtney getting the cane from Bezel, Mr. B, and Norman's K. So now I'm really plugging the goddamn righteous reverend, and he don't want to pay me. So as I say, cash app, 80 baby 22 subscribe, share, like, and tell me what you think about the situation there. Tell me what you really feel about the situation. I never went back and said, hey, man, this shit coming back a half a key. Take this shit back, get my money. Never said that. I just moved the shit and kept it moving. Fuck it, man. I'm moving. I'm in a high power spot. I can move it and still come out with mine. I ain't making no profit, but I'm not losing. I'm coming back with the principal, but I'm not making any profit. And understand that when he lost a goddamn $8,000, he wasn't making any profit and he didn't come back with the principal. So you niggas had to know when a nigga's hand called for that, Give a man what his hand called for. Give a man what his hand called for. And in my opinion, that's what his hand called for. Give his brother a hell of a run. And he know in his heart, the fat man, Eddie Baby. Eddie Baby gave that brother a hell of a run. And he know that in his heart. And if he don't want to admit that, so be it. So cash out, Eddie Baby 22. Subscribe, share like you, and more The Righteous Reverend on the way. But I just had to tell y'all how we fall down. What my man say, but we get up. We fall down, but God damn it, we get up. And I can tell you another brother that know that song like I know it. Courtney Brown Jr. We fall down, but God damn it, we get back up and we get back up stronger than ever. But we might fall down, God damn it, but we get back up. So cash out, Eddie Baby 22, subscribe, share, and thank you too. Cash out, Eddie Baby 22, subscribe, share, like, and thank you too. What you think about that story? And they always said this, and I'm going to leave y'all on this and I'm gone. The cream always float to the goddamn top. Now, is that true or not? They say the cream always floats to the top. So I'm out, cash out, Eddie Baby 22, and here's a nightcap for y'all. What y'all think? I know I was wrong, but I really believe I took it like a man, and I made up, and I gave the brother a house shot. I took it like a man. I was wrong. I apologize to this very day. I was wrong. I apologize. But at the same time, what y'all think about the story? Peace out. Cash out, Eddie Baby 22. Subscribe, share, like, and thank you too. And by the way, stop over there on Spotify, Crime Town, Kingpin's Kids. Would you have took it like that? You didn't fuck $8,000 of that man money up. Now, you're going to go back to him bitching about that package? Yeah, it's a half a key. You done lost a half a key. So you lost a key and a half. That's far more than 8000 Hold up now. Let's be serious. A key and a half was far more than 8000 Giving him... $200 extra every day for a year straight was far more than 8000 Tell me what's 200 times $365, and that's what I gave him extra when I knew I didn't have to. But I did it out of loyalty. What did Donald Trump say? Loyalty is everything, and that's how I kept it. Loyalty. Fuck it. That's the way it was. Peace out. I'll give you another installment later, so I'm out.